How's it going, folks? I've had a lot of fun with MGS5's gameplay over the last few months, but it's the addition of the buddies that took it over the edge for me. The game's scenarios and situations are so freeform that they can all be solved in a plethora of ways, and that's just if you're playing solo. Bringing along one of the AI buddies increases the permutations of loadouts and approaches exponentially. Each buddy has his own pros and cons, though, but having them with you almost always puts you in a more advantageous position. They are so effective that I've missed them when I've gone back to tackling missions on my own. These aren't just AI subroutines that follow you around, that you feel obligated to look after. These are proper battlefield companions that will truly have your back if a situation turns sticky. So, in this series, I'll be doing something a little different to what I've done before. After playing and experimenting with the buddies a lot, I thought I'd document their abilities, tactics and nuances so we can get a better idea of how they operate in the field. First up, it's D-Dog. D-Dog is technically a wolf, really. You can scoop him up after you find him wandering the wilderness. After our resident wildcat trains him, he becomes an essential member of Diamond Dogs. The crazy thing is, he shares a lot of similarities in look and personality to my actual dog, which is probably the reason why I have such a soft spot for Little Cutie. Biases aside, let's get into his mission capabilities. 1. His Scouting Abilities Scouting plays a pretty major role in MGS5, more so than any other game in the series. The open world nature of the game means the player can travel in any direction they wish, but that also goes for enemy patrols. This is why tagging is so important and by extension what makes D-Dog a great buddy. D-Dog can automatically tag enemies, wild animals, and weapon emplacements within a radius of around 130 meters. That huge distance is a massive advantage in the field. DD will have a good idea of exactly what you're going up against well before you do. Because of this, he can be a great addition to just about any approach, and you can adjust your stealth method on the fly. Just as an example, if one direction has too many tagged enemies for your taste, you can just head in another direction that has less of them. Alternatively, you could use that gun emplacement DD just found for you to thin out the opposition. 2. His offensive abilities. DD's not just about scouting though. You can have him embrace his wolfy ways at will to engage enemies. When you want to sick him on a guard, his effective range is limited only to your line of sight. It's possible, then, to find a good vantage spot overlooking a base or outpost, and send DD in alone, taking out guys one after the other. This method is insanely risky, though, and DD will almost always need cover fire. He's not the stealthiest of buddies when he's on the offensive, and you will want to cover him as he makes his move. Fail to cover him, and you will hear the most gut-wrenching sound ever heard. If enemies are grouped together though, DD will take them all out in succession, as long as he's not interrupted, much like Snake's consecutive CQC. DD's behaviour though is dictated by his outfit. Let's go through DD's wardrobe now and check out his repertoire. Subject A, Naked. DD's first and arguably least useful loadout, not to say it's awful or anything. It certainly has its uses, but the keep em busy command, which effectively disarms and stuns one guard for a few seconds, will attract all other guards within a 20 meter radius. As distraction manoeuvre, it's not ideal. DD will have to be saved from the encounter with the enemy he holds, and there are so many other options to cause distraction in this game that using DD just seems cruel. I'd say this loadout for DD fits well with any CQC centric or non lethal playstyle that picks on isolated enemies. Subjects B and C, the sneaking suit variants. These two are both sides of the same coin. His sneaking suit variants are designed to neutralize enemies outright, lethally or non-lethally. The act of DD pouncing up on and dispatching the enemy is pretty quick, quicker than any of his other attacks. And DD doing an acrobatic flip off the enemy? Well, that's just the icing on the cake. Unfortunately, even though it's a sneaking suit, it doesn't actually make DD any more stealthy, and guards will still react to him 
at around the same distance as his other outfits, which is around 10 metres. Subject D, the battle dress. If naked was the least useful, battle dress is a close second. In his battle suit, DD will maul and heavily wound enemies instead of killing them. The guard will be incapacitated, but the drawn out attack leaves DD in the open for longer, much longer than his sneaking suit attacks, meaning he is far more likely to be rumbled. The suit itself boosts his defense, so he'll be able to take more of a beating from small arms fire and carry on with an attack instead of retreating. And while the improved defense is welcome, it doesn't make that much a difference, seeing as Didi is still quite a fragile buddy, even with his armour. The strangest thing is, is that this outfit is the antithesis of what makes Didi great. It's obvious to see that Didi is at his best when the enemy doesn't know he's coming, so setting him up as an assault dog is a nice option to have, but ultimately redundant when it's compared to everything else Didi is capable of. And finally, Subject E, Tactical Fulton. The adorable Fulton gear allows DD to extract downed enemies, prisoners and animals, but nothing big like vehicles, weapon emplacements or resource containers. Every extraction he does though is completely free, and comes from his own infinite inventory of Fulton devices, meaning you don't have to equip as much, or any at all, during mission prep. 3. His Auxiliary Abilities Didi's weight and bark commands are available regardless of whatever loadout he has equipped, and can be used either separately or together to create diversions, traps or ambushes. Straying too far from Didi, after he's been told to wait, will have him disregard the order. The distance seems to vary from location to location, sometimes he'll give you around 20 metres of leeway, other times around 50. I've noticed it's even less than that though, during a sandstorm. Maybe it's linked to his line of sight, so as soon as he can't see you, he'll try to catch up with you? What can I say, he's a faithful hound, he just wants to be by his master's side. Didi's bark catches the attention of guards in a 60 meter radius. The good thing about this ability is it draws attention towards Didi without actually putting him in any danger. One advantage that Didi shares with D Horse is they are by default low threat to enemies. While idle, if Didi is spotted by a guard, he will simply be shooed away. The guard won't raise an alarm and, as a contextual bonus, may even have their patrol delayed slightly. Additionally, DD is also extremely helpful when it comes to sniffing out medicinal plants and minefields. In both instances, DD will notify the player as and when he detects something in range, adding a helpful icon on the iDroid's map. So rarer plants like Digitalis or Haoma, which are always worth picking up but are an absolute pain to find, can be found a lot easier, making their grind, you know, more tolerable. And when the enemy starts countering your playstyle with mines, Didi can be the buddy that stealthily counters this precaution. D-Dog also makes the game's most ridiculous side quest, animal capturing, fit more naturally into gameplay. The main problem I have with this side activity is that it seems the game poorly explains what it means when you're told D-Dog found wild animal. The majority of the time, what that means is D-Dog has tagged a wild animal like a wolf or bird nearby. But sometimes, and this is just a theory, it means D-Dog has sniffed out an animal's habitat. I think this because sometimes when I've been told D-Dog found wild animal, no animals have actually been marked in the area I'm in, and my location usually lines up with the highlighted areas from the screen on the iDroid that shows the animal habitats. Habitats are where cages can be deployed to capture the more elusive animals that don't actually appear in gameplay such as the legendary Suchino Suchinoko. That is how it's pronounced, right? 4. His Drawbacks and Weaknesses Didi is very much a passive or supportive buddy, and in a way can be thought of as the Phantom Pain's answer to the Soliton radar system. So he gives the player a good idea of enemy positions in the area, but during an alert phase, you can't really count on him. During a combat alert, Didi will almost always immediately run off somewhere. It's as much a good thing as it is a bad thing though. Yes, with 
Didi's drastic change in position, his attack functions lose a lot of tactical value, with any order issued having a longer delay time than usual. But at least he's not left sitting around in the open waiting to get shot. As I said earlier, all the buddies, Didi included, seem to have some semblance of intelligence about them, and will prioritise self-preservation when they come into heavy fire. They all do it in different ways, but it's definitely a welcome part of their skill sets. So with Didi being so fragile, when he runs for cover, it's in both the player's and his best interests to do so. Because if Didi is forced to retreat or die, all the intel he's constantly feeding you dies with him. Fitting with his passive behaviour, he lacks any sort of weapons free or cover me command, so he won't go out looking for enemies to take down. He's stuck following your lead. So if you're confident in your own abilities, Didi will just make your job a lot easier. He's also an animal, obviously. So unfortunately, he doesn't know how to use a gun, yet. It wouldn't surprise me to see the R&D team create a line of back-mounted dog guns, especially for him. But until then, he has no long-range attacks. He can see the enemy coming, he just can't do anything about it. To conclude... Didi is a great all-around buddy, but, with the element of surprise, Didi becomes a formidable ally. Playstyles that come from the ghosting school of thought will almost always have a space for Didi in their plans and approaches, and while he may not be the most useful buddy to have in a firefight, he is low maintenance in those situations, and he more than makes up for it when it comes to infiltration or ambush tactics, tactics that fit well into tackling a lot of what the game has to offer.